Hey, what's up guys? It's Landon here. I produce under the name Crush, and today I'm going to show you my workflow for using artificial intelligence to separate stems from any song that you can imagine. So if you've ever been listening to a song and you thought that was a fire snare, or I wonder how he made that kick, or um, potentially even, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of things does an artist put on a vocal chain or something like that, uh, I'm going to show you uh, a demo of, of that. and. Um, if you guys want to let me know, like to make a tutorial for how to download all this, how to get it all working on Windows, uh, let me know. Um, but uh, I, it was pretty simple for me, and I'm in no way a programmer or anything like that. And uh, I'll have everything that I use linked in the description below uh, to download for you to try around, tinker around yourself. Um, uh, but the program we're using is uh, DMUCS for Max. Uh, it's a live Max program or plugin and which is basically DLC for Ableton. Um, but there's also a um, like standalone GUI version available. I just couldn't get it working for some reason. Um, and this is more convenient to anyone who works within Ableton. So the first step to this process is you're going to need to acquire a high quality wave, uh, you know, lossless version um, of the file that, that you're looking to get, because that's that's going to get you the the you know the most information for you to play around with in Ableton. So what I use is I have a subscription to um, um, the like highest tier of um, title here, and I uh, by the way you can get a fifty percent discount if you're a student. Uh, so get it, get that for basically the same price as Spotify, but it's HiFi if you enter your email. Um, so definitely do that. And I'm really into Lucash. Luke Hash is a, definitely an artist of mine that uh, got me into producing originally. Uh, f like he's like a future synth kind of deal. Um, so I I really like his his drum rack. I'm just not sure how it's constructed, uh, and it's really hard to hear drums, percussions, and, and really reverse engineer that. And uh, that's where AI comes in. So here it is right here, Tidal Media Downloader Pro. There's also a regular version for the uh, like um, $5 student tier, but I pay the, the $12 student tier for uh, Hi-Fi. And this will just spit out a very nice WAV file of any song on Tidal. Um, now I know there's similar um, media solutions for Spotify. Um, I, I think if you just Google, you know, Spotify Media Downloader, make sure it's legit. Make sure you know what you're doing when you're Googling stuff and software. I'm not responsible for any viruses, but uh, yeah, your first step is basically just going to find um, a legal method of how to get uh, um, high quality um, WAV files. Now, if you, if you are on Spotify, it's not going to spit out a WAV file probably because Spotify doesn't have a higher tier, but there's also Deezer. Uh, I know there used to be methods to get Deezer um, WAV files, um, but this is how I do it. This I'm just showing you guys how I do it. So, you go to media title media downloader pro, and you're gonna click the release, and it just it's just an executable. You can put that sucker anywhere on your computer, and here it is. Uh, Google, you just search whatever song you want, whatever album you want, and I have it right here. Um, have the locations all set up, and the way I want it really doesn't matter. All this gets put into a folder, uh, a reference track folder, in my. Um, uh, in my Ableton project folder anyway. So I'm gonna go back to search and we're gonna click okay and it's gonna download that sucker and make sure it's gonna say big big red, make sure it's lossless. So we're gonna go ahead and yeah, make sure it's in hi-fi. So open up the folder you downloaded. I'm using one commander, uh, by the way, uh, excellent file management program, way better than the default. And it's going to have uh, FLAC files, by the way, not WAV files. Same difference. It's all lossless. Um, so there you go. You got that's the method I use to get uh, high quality reference tracks to play with. And so the next step here is to um, find a song with uh, the sample, the drum samples that you want. In my case, uh, he uses the same rack throughout the album, I believe. So I am basically going to be going through. And I'm trying to find a section in the song with the cleanest uh, mix. So once I've identified the song, uh, I'm going to go into Ableton and uh, let's see, here's just a default template. 
Uh, I'm going to delete everything and rename an audio track. Ref or ref, ref master is what I usually do for this. Uh, I color it white. And then we're going to take our song here and your Stardust. Uh, actually, no, we're not going to do that. Before we do that, um, we're going to make sure we get the correct DPM. Um, because it if if you drag it into Ableton to the wrong uh, BPM, then it'll um like auto correct it to a wrong BPM or the default one twenty. So in order to get that, I use this excellent website. It's called Toonbat. Um, any song key or BPM, and usually gets it right unless it's like uh um some different scale like Fringian mode or anything like that. You'll about to figure out yourself. But you know, basic music theory, you you you, you can pretty much understand that so we're gonna enter luke ash start dust i hope that was the song uh yes and it's 100 and it's in c sharp minor so we keep that in mind um that's just an excellent reference for for any kind of music production that, that, that website so we're gonna take our bpm we're gonna let bound that 100 take a track and Drag it into here and make sure there's no fuckery. We're gonna double click on that and disable warp. Uh, it did a good job finding the the BPM. This BPM of the song uh, pretty much lines up exactly. The, the kicks and the snares matching up with the measured lines. Uh, so once you got that down, um, you know, identify part of the song here. And the part, this this part right here doesn't have much. Has some uh, hats in the high end. So it's going to separate the hats, the kick, and the snare. And you got that little pad going over, but it shouldn't be too hard. Again, like, I'm being very picky just for the sake of this YouTube video here. But you'll be surprised just how, how accurate this algorithm is at, at getting and isolating um, the mix. And uh, you're going to take the uh, .amxd and you're just going to drag it over onto this track like you would any other like VST or effect or anything. And you're going to click start and it's going to do its work. And you'll know it's working because it's going to uh, probably spike up the, yeah, a little bit the GPU memory usage here on my 2080 Ti. Uh, and there's also a CPU versions of this um, program as well. But they did. They just take so much longer, and like maybe, yeah. See, this 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 didn't take that long at all. Um, whereas a CPU would take up to six minutes, so or so. So keep that in mind. So it will spit all these out into a folder called separated uh, in the uh, get cloned folder from from GitHub, and it'll have vocal, other bass, drums, and it'll structure it based on the song name. As you can see, I've. I have a few other songs I messed around with there. So I'm going to go back here and we're just going to create a sep a um a audio track name. Make sure yeah, make sure it's audio. And we're just going to drums. Take all these and drag them in there to their appropriate positions. And we'll have to do some adjusting. And depending on how OCD you want to get with it is up to you. I'm just really OCD, right? So I, I, I get down to like here and I really look into it. I see there's this peak here that's pretty identifiable. Just drums, master, just drums. Yep. Uh, and you can just go through the rest of the tracks, just make them, make them line up as well. So if we look here at the bass track, uh, solo that here it's pretty excellent so from here there's several things we can do right we can um convert the drum track just the drum track to midi uh by going here and we can right click and uh depending on your pc this might really crash it or uh, It'll take a very long time because um, on mine it takes a long time. So yeah, right click, convert drum drums to MIDI track. 
pretty good. So because we've used it, that we've used the AI to separate the drums, um, it's much more accurate than if we were just to take the master and reference it to drums, right? So that's like the two step to get really accurate. And then I can convert this to a Lin rack or something more original to the song, right? Um, but we've got the timing that we need. Um, just take, uh, I don't know, like an eight bar of this and just put that onto a Lin and, and that's usually, I'm a, you know, I'm off to the races at that point. So next step in the process is to isolate the samples. Um, so we're gonna find that, that part in that song where, where it was really quiet. Okay. And let's turn off the master. Let's go back and see, see what measure that starts at 21, I believe. And it's really clean. You can hear that pad a little bit. Yeah. And all these sound pretty similar. Kick, hat, snare, kick, hat, snare, kick, hat, snare. And I'm just fishing uh, on the grid at 1-4, looking for comparing these kicks. They all sound pretty similar. These all sound like good... Uh, good candidates. So, um, what is that? Is that that is okay. That is a hat. Make sure we get that. So I'm just gonna come right here, and here's our samples. And we're going. I'm going to um, create a MIDI and drums. I make my I make my drums orange. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's what I like. I make sure this is not in the group here and uh make sure that we just put a a rack just a default rack or whatever right and uh double click here and we're just going to drag this sample that we isolated into here so but so basically just pull up an eq <laughs> uh eq8 is fine for this that comes with ableton live studio and make sure that it is within the group and not on the rack. Um, and pull this out, and we're going to see exactly what the issue is here. Um, and I'm just going to uh, what was it 2300? Whatever. Let's see. Uh, I'm just going to create a four bar here. Yeah, hearing that click, that click I'm trying to get rid of, right? And you're usually going to find it around a thousand. Increase the hue. So we got to a point where I think I'm pretty happy with this as a snare sample. You can see it with the EQ off. The EQ on. Sounds pretty great. Um, any, it sounds, you know, like at, at least for me, an hour's worth of sound design on a kick, and that's usually when my ears get really worn. Is doing that, so this saves me a lot of time. Um, if I'm just trying to get a track going or just trying to get along, you know, move along with the learning process. So I got the kick here at a place I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with. If if you're like a sound engineer veteran, you're probably cringing at this but I think that sounds okay. So I'm happy with that. Make sure that you're, you know, your EQ is in the same place. Got the kick, snare, kick, snare. Got ourselves a hat. And we can just go into here and just like I would start a new track, um, turn everything off on the reference and Let's see, uh, put down an eight bar, set an eight bar, <laughs> right? Okay, it's getting closer. What we we're getting closer. Um, I'm gonna go to the snare and I'm going to put some Valhalla gated reverb on that. 
just giving away my secrets here. Of <laughs> Right, okay. And then maybe um You know, once we got our uh sample laid out, you know, you can start making a full song. So I could tinker with that and design with the rack, you know, till the end of, till the end of time. I've taken weeks doing that on my uh, Recreshlin track that I haven't featured in most of my music. Um, but so once you got that, you click the save icon and we just name this, you know, Luke Hashlin or something. So that we had that. And yeah, now I'm just... We're good to go. We have zero friction next time. We want to just sit down and work on anything else but, you know, the drums, because that's very time consuming, at least I find it is. So here's an example of a track that um, is completely different from the song I made out of it, but worked out really well. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my process for how I use artificial intelligence in my workflow. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, let me guys know if you want any more content from me. Uh, I have a lot of a little bit more free time this semester to work on my personal branding. Uh, that's something I'm definitely looking forward to doing. Um, there's all sorts of projects I'd like to get accomplish. Um, I got into VR again, so playing through Half Life Alex. If you want to see some of that content. Um, and then I'm messing around with FSR and different impl implementations of DLSS um, um, super sampling, basically in performing VR performance. Um, I could do more track breakdowns even. Um, I got my EP coming out hopefully by the summer. You know, I said that last summer, but <laughs> uh, I'll get my ass down on it. And uh, I've been thinking of live streaming that, uh, not to... to, to Twitch or anything though. Uh, I mean, Twi uh, Twitch is not <laughs> Twitch is Twitch is not long for this world. So probably in YouTube and Facebook, I might I might start doing that. Um, and yeah, um, uh, I also have like got bit into AI um, as far as uh, stable diffusion and art generation, and uh, getting better at that. Uh, definitely some very interesting results. Um, yeah, so like, here's an example of, uh, some AI art I was able to generate with Crow Diffusion, um, for like an album art, potentially, uh, cover, uh, looks really, really great. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, uh, I'm definitely trying to get better at this YouTube thing, trying to talk to a camera. It is definitely very different than the PR world I'm used to talking to a real person. <laughs> uh. But yeah, uh, hopefully more videos coming soon. See you guys.